So this is important information that we will use in some of our calculations almost every time when they ask for a reason uh, or substantiate your answer that this would actually come into play. Uh, this question one, it says here a new 4 kilowatt 234 volt geyser is to be installed in an existing installation using a 2 core armored copper cable plus a separate earth conductor that's basically 3 conductors. The cable is installed against a plastered wall 50 meters away from the DB. It says here in question 1, calculate the correct cable size to be used. Start with the smallest cable possible for this load and show all calculations. Okay, so for 7 marks, I surmise what they want here is that they want us to find which cable we must use. So with the given information, you will then take, let's for argument sake say, your experience tells you your cable size start with 1.5 millimeter squared. You have sort of an idea what it could possibly be in a average domestic installation, but you know, in domestic uh, installations, your distance is hardly 50 meters. I mean, you don't really get a three bedroom 50 meter house. So uh, that taken into consideration, you know that you're probably going to have to just use a cable size maybe higher than what you normally would because of the distance. Right, so that keeping that in mind, if you have the experience of new installations or drawing wire or any sort of uh, experience, just keep that in the back of your mind. Maybe you could be completely wrong, but maybe that, in, that comes into play. All right, so we see there is a question 2, um, 1.2 and 1.3 and it's scratched out because that's no calculation. It just says there what must the maximum resistance of bonding be when measured from the geyser to the distribution board and from just doing COCs in my experience I know it should be 0.2 but SANS also tell us it is 0.2. Which formula would you use to calculate the current on the neutral conductor of a three phase unbalanced load this formula you would find under the voltage drop information the actual annex d all right and not in section six where they cover the current carrying capacity of conductors this is where voltage drop actually comes from but in the annex information uh, they would actually give you the formula for this and going back to question one uh, say so here firstly calculate the current I by using P equals VI um, as we can see it comes back to us we then manipulate the formula and we calculate the current um, it says here P equals VI I equals P divided by V and we have then 4 kilowatt divided by 230 volts and it gives us 17,4 or 17,39 amps Next step, we've got our amps, what do we do? We will then now take the amps, choose a formula according to the information we have. Let's see what happens. Question 1. We are working out the voltage drop for 1 millimeter squared. Right, so, uh, they are using the same formula as in the calculation before. They are going um, about it in a certain manner where they find the millivolt per amp per meter uh, for 1.5 millimeter squared uh, would be 29 according to the table that we just looked at in the previous sum and uh, they divide all of that by a thousand so they use 29 uh, which they get from the table for the millivolt per amp per meter and that 29 lines up with 1.5 millimeter squared and it is times the amps that we calculated and times the meters which is 50 divided by 1000 and it says 25.2 volts. The answer here I get or an assumption I make is that remember the question says find the correct cable size. How do we find the cable size? By working out, out all the cable sizes, the voltage drop for the cable sizes and what would tell us if the voltage drop is acceptable or not? Simply the 5% of 230. Now, if we know that 5% of 230 is 11,5 volts, then it means that whatever our, our answer is must be 11,5 or less. Then we know that cable size will be, be sufficient. So, we find the answer here of 25,2 volts. 
and I say can't be used because it's over 5%. It's more than 11.5 volts. Right, I move on. I use 230 volts, 230, uh, 2.5 millimeters squared cable. What do I do now? I go to my table for millivolt ampermeter and I, I line up a, a value there and I find 18 to line up with 2.5 millimeters squared. I use that in my formula. I use again 17,39 times 50, which is the meters, divided by 1000. I get an answer of 15,6 volts. I say it can't be used because it's over 5% of 230 volts. So we now understand how significant the 5% of 230 volts is. It, it tells us that we cannot use this size cable. At this point I'm thinking, okay, so for a geezer I would have used 2.5 millimeter squared in a normal situation, all right? But like we mentioned um, as we started this sum, that um, a domestic installation is hardly, you know, where the, the, the geezer is 50 meters away from the DB. So let's carry on to 4 millimeter squared and we use the same formula and we then uh, go to the table and we line up the millivolt per amp per meter uh, value up with 4 millimeters squared we find a value of 11 we, we use the same current we use the same distance and we divide all of that by a thousand and we find a value of 9,5 volts I say here this value can be used because it's within 5% of 230 now maybe you would say to yourself I wonder what would happen if I used 6 millimeters squared now we can probably, you know, if you want to entertain it, um, my take on that is the examiner don't want to see how smart you are or how much you know, um, you know, uh, just stop when it gets or the value is within the prescribed, uh, um, you know, regulation or the, the prescribed value. So in this case, if my answer was 11,5 on the dot, I would, he would want you to use it because you need to understand that uh, the point of this whole exercise is that do you understand what the 5% of 230 volt means? All right. So stop when it is within or when you reach that point where it's just under or just on that value. All right. Uh, you can maybe say something extra there that if I had gone on I would probably find that I would get a better voltage drop, but then the job would become expensive. So then you won't be practical either, you know. But uh, in a real world, in a real scenario, uh, from experience point of view, we would want the, the customer or the installation to be a good installation. There's good practice, there's bad practice. Uh, in my opinion, I would probably go for even a 6 millimeter squared because I know they, this wire will never heat up. Okay, whereas the 9,5 volts, it's so close to 11.5, but the answer here is 9,5 volts, and, and it can be used because of uh, the fact that it's within the percentage.